Mr. Factor, we're going to come to you with this story. It's coming out of the Miami Herald. I'll read the headline first couple graphs, and I'm going to ask you to comment. Headline, so long, paradise. Long timers and natives depart for homes outside of Miami-Dade County. Miriam Mar Marino's life might cause anyone to think she enjoyed the best of Miami-Dade County. On her $400,000 real estate salary, she said she could afford weekly dinners at the River Oyster Bar and the latest $6,500 Santa Cruz Tallboy mountain bike. She traveled around the globe and owned two condos outright in Miami. For the Cuban-born 59-year-old whose family escaped Fidel Castro's communist regime in 1968, Marino has made it big in Miami, but in recent years, her quality of life declined. The city's allure has faded. Traffic became impossible. People that came in here were disrespectful. The developers get whatever they want, Marino said. It became a pirate town. Whoever has more money wins. With $1 million in her pocket from the sale of her condo, Marina left in April. 40 years in Miami, San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica. She bought a 700 square foot, one bedroom, one bathroom condominium for 150 grand. She continues to work remotely doing real estate consulting for a firm in Miami. Mr. Fackler, is that it for paradise? Are they, re are they writing the end of Miami once again, the end of paradise? How do you make 400 grand a year and you can barely scrape by? What say you, Mr. Fackler? Is there some hyperbole in here? Or is this like a hardship story where Mrs. Marino, who's 59, making 400 grand, is said, oh, I've been dealt a bad hand. Now, there were two elements in this story that I really think are important. And that is the net loss of population in Miami-Dade, which happened during this, during the COVID well, we had this huge influx of population here. So you would think the increase, there would be an increase in population in uh, Miami-Dade. Uh, but in fact, there was a net loss, including the addition of population of, the, of this mass movement here. Mr. So Fector, I, if I could interrupt, if I could interrupt, I didn't actually refer to the population decrease. It's later on in the story. So let me just, let me just tell the audience. According to the story, Miami-Dade County, uh, its population declined by 28,000 to 2.67 million. This is something we discussed in season three. Uh, the largest of the state's 67 counties, Miami-Dade lost the most. Broward County, they gained 2,700 residents, so it's a push. And then if you look at Palm Beach County, they rose by 26,300 residents, so about $1.5 million. So exactly. Dade is down population, Broward is slight increase, and Palm Beach has spiked. Exactly. Uh, please continue, Mr. And there's been an overall increase in the state, according to those statistics. Now, it really does focus on Miami-Dade and about the people relocating out. The reasons why um, infrastructure, noise problems, there's a, a million different things you can point to. Um, and what was interesting, another takeaway that I thought was interesting was, is they're talking about there's a delay. People are leaving a little bit here and a little bit there, but I actually think if that continues and people can't find jobs that pay well enough to support themselves, there's going to be an exodus out of Miami-Dade. Where will they go? They'll go back to where they came. Maybe they'll go back to Broward and Palm Beach. Um, listen, it makes sense. So I think the problem is going to get worse before it gets better as far as this, uh, people leaving Miami-Dade. Mr. Facklin, before we go to John with the next story, question to you. What does it take you for you to leave Miami and move elsewhere? I'm not going to lie. I've been thinking about it myself. And it's just, I might even make a relocate to upstate New York where it's the cheap living. And I have friends up there. But it's just something I've considered. You know, I, you know, my life is here. My friends, my colleagues, my work. I'm, it's not that easy to just pick up and leave. But I'll tell you, it's something that I think a lot of people are considering. So I think to jump in here, the story referenced her qual quality of life. Not that she was dealt a bad hand. And everyone's quality of life is different, especially when you're getting older and she is deciding what her future is or has decided that. And there are a lot of people, as we were just discussing, that are looking at Miami in a whole new way because of all these different things that are here. What's interesting to me, and I think is indicative of how the city is changing and attracting a different group of people, is the number of rest new high-end restaurants that are opening here every other day. And it is remarkable. And you scratch your head and you say, where is a population that can support that many restaurants? And I think that is you know, the canary in the coal mine here. Can I just add that uh, we talked a little bit earlier about the messy effect of 
uh, Latins and Argentines specifically moving here. But I don't think that's going to be enough to offset the exodus. It may put the number down as far as uh, people leave, but I, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. So Miami has always been a focus of gentrification for Latin Americans. They've been coming here for decades. And their situation in their whole countries is usually the catalyst for their here. When there is chaos or a bad economy somewhere in Brazil or Venezuela or Colombia, then there are more people from those countries coming here. We have a big influx of Russians now that has been going on for decades. Um, there are a lot of different groups that are looking to Miami increasingly because of the opportunity to spend their wealth. They can have big ships. The city of Miami, as well as other cities throughout South Florida, are increasing the ability to have bigger ships dock. And whether you like it or not, that is where Miami is heading. It's been heading there for a long time. And the housing is supporting that idea because you see more and more expensive housing and luxury living and all these amenities that are being offered. So there is an exit of a certain group for whatever reason. Probably a lot of it has to do with affordability. But in the short term, the interest rates being so high is a kind of block on that continued shift because if you sell your property, where are you going to go exactly? So there may be a, an evaluation going on amongst local residents as to whether their quality of life is where it needs to be for them to stay here. But I don't think it's going to happen as quickly as they're suggesting. Oscar, if I could just ask you, though, you said uh, the woman's 59, she's only making 400 grand a year, and her quality of life has suffered. Typically, you know, once you get long in the tooth, isn't healthcare much more important? Is that the right time uh, to be venturing off to an area where uh, you know, Costa Rica is beautiful. I've been, uh, but you basically are relying upon uh, healthcare that's not in the United States. And Miami has a tourism, a healthcare tourism industry where people come here from Latin America, places like Costa Rica, in order to get the medical. So I sort of square that. So qual quality of life issues can relate to everything from your housing to access to healthcare to affordable healthcare that is quality healthcare to, you know, being able to visit your grandkids or to find a good job. And the specifics of this real estate agent's case is hard to determine other than the fact that they may be looking out to the United States for something that's more affordable. Or Jean, yeah. is this a situation where this woman does real estate? She knows it's at top of the market. She's dumping, going yeah. liquid going overseas and waiting to circle back and take down the stuff that possibly she put people into, yeah. buy it from at a cheaper price. Yeah. Isn't that also a scenario? Look, Miami-Dade is fully built out, okay? There's no room. Palm Beach it has tons of land. So it's no that, that the population is growing in Palm Beach. Miami-Dade has a lack of land. And then uh, obviously we're swapping out a new residents who have a lot of disposable income and for people who have less income. So it makes sense that people with lower incomes are leaving. And the fact of the matter is Miami-Dade has always exported residents to the rest of Florida. It's just an, an exporter of population. And we're, what, we're, what we constantly get in Miami is this constant flux of people coming in, new people coming in with more money, people with less money moving out. And, we, and, and the fact of the matter is, is that the lack of developable land means that you can't have you can't have this huge population growth that the rest of Florida is seeing. So when you see 28,000 people, 28,000 people is really in the scheme of things out of a 2.6 million population, really not that much. I, like, I think we made quite a, this story made quite a bit of hullabaloo over numbers that really were like, the county's fully built out. You, you can't fit more people and maybe in high rises and stuff. I, I thought it was like making a lot out of not a lot of not big numbers. You know what I'm saying?